Hi, I'm Dr. Lynn Schuchter. Thank you for watching this program. If you've been diagnosed with melanoma, this program can help you and your loved ones know what to expect during your medical care and what treatment options you may have. As you're managing your melanoma, you may be cared for by a team of doctors. This could include a surgeon, a surgical oncologist, dermatologist, or a medical oncologist. This is the second in a series of three videos on melanoma treatment. You should feel free to watch all three videos or to view the one most relevant to your current needs. By watching this program and taking other steps to understand your treatment options, you are empowering yourself to be an active participant in your care. Work closely with your doctor and healthcare team. Ask lots of questions and don't be afraid to ask the same questions more than once. Your team is there for you and they want to help. Like many patients with melanoma, you may have had surgery to remove tumors from the skin or lymph nodes. Even after the melanoma tumor has been removed, there is a risk that there could be a recurrence of melanoma or a new primary melanoma. In this video, you will learn about two approaches to your care following surgery. Two points that we want to emphasize. First is follow-up surveillance in which you and your doctor are monitored or watched closely for evidence that the melanoma has recurred. The second point I'll come to is a concept called adjuvant therapy, and this is medical treatment that follows surgery. Adjuvant therapy its purpose is to reduce the risk for cancer recurrence or metastasis in patients who are at increased risk for developing a recurrence. As always, if you have questions about the information in this program or about your own treatment plan, reach out to your healthcare team. They are eager to share their information and insights with you and to participate fully in the management of your care. The first thing we'll discuss is follow-up or surveillance. Patients who've been diagnosed with melanoma do need to be monitored by their physicians, a team of physicians, to check for any signs of recurrence of melanoma. There are two things that we're monitoring for. First is a recurrence of the melanoma that the patient had originally. And the second is that anybody who's been diagnosed with melanoma is at increased risk for developing a second primary melanoma. So recurrences can be two. One is a recurrence from the original melanoma, and the second is a brand new melanoma on the skin. Recurrence of melanoma can occur near the original site of the primary melanoma. This is called local regional recurrence. So this could be a recurrence near the original spot on the skin, and this is a local recurrence. Melanoma can also be a recurrence in what we call regional lymph nodes, so the lymph nodes that drain that particular part of the skin. So in your monitoring and in your surveillance on the physical examination, we're monitoring for a local recurrence at the original site of surgery or if any lymph nodes are involved. The second part of a recurrence is that the melanoma could travel to a distant site in the body. And so this is melanoma that's traveled through the bloodstream. And so your doctors may also be ordering x-rays or blood tests to also detect any recurrence of melanoma at a distant site. And finally, your doctors are looking at your skin to determine if you have a new primary melanoma. As I've mentioned, patients with melanoma may be at increased risk for developing a second brand new melanoma on their skin. And so part of your follow-up and monitoring also is looking for a new primary melanoma. During each of these visits, the doctor will perform a physical examination, which will include a thorough skin exam. The doctor will also examine lymph nodes. Medical tests are also an important part of routine follow-up care because this can reveal possible signs of metastasis in distant areas such as the lung or liver. These tests can include blood tests, which may be a complete blood count, liver function blood test, and an LDH level. A blood test for LDH can be a sign that melanoma has traveled or metastasized. So an elevated LDH can be a sign that melanoma has traveled. In addition, patients should undergo periodic chest x-rays or CT scans or PET scans to evaluate for any signs of distant metastasis. The frequency of the follow-up surveillance will depend upon the risk of the patient's prior melanoma. Most patients whose melanomas were less than one millimeter thick are considered to be at low risk for recurrence. It is recommended that these patients have follow-up visits every six months for two years and then once a year. 
Patients are considered to be high risk for melanoma recurring if their original primary melanoma was more than four millimeters thick or if melanoma had spread to regional lymph nodes. These patients should have follow-up visits every three to four months for two years, and then every six months for three years, and then once a year. The patient also plays an important role in their overall surveillance and follow-up. The doctor or healthcare team will instruct patients on how to do monthly self-skin exams, recognize the skin changes associated with melanoma, and feel for enlarged lymph nodes. Keep in mind that patients play an important role in their surveillance by letting their doctors know of any changes or new symptoms. These follow-up visits may occur with your medical oncologist, surgical oncologist, or dermatologist. Next, I'd like to discuss adjuvant therapy. Adjuvant treatment means additional or extra treatment. Adjuvant therapy is the course of treatment given after surgery for removal of the melanoma on the skin or melanoma in the regional lymph nodes. The purpose of adjuvant therapy is to reduce the risk of melanoma recurrence or metastasis. Candidates for adjuvant therapy are those patients who are at higher risk for recurrence of melanoma or metastasis. And this includes patients whose melanomas are greater than four millimeters thick or if the melanoma has traveled to regional lymph nodes. Current adjuvant therapy options include a medicine known as interferon, and the other option is to participate in a clinical trial which is being tested nationally. Interferon is the only FDA-approved treatment for high-risk melanoma, and interferon is a medicine that improves or stimulates the body's natural immune response against cancer cells. When interferon is used as adjuvant therapy in melanoma, the therapy is generally given for one year. The treatment is interferon intravenously, so that's in a vein, five days a week for one month, followed by injections into the skin three days a week for 11 months. Interferon has been shown to reduce the risk of recurrence of melanoma and possibly to improve overall survival. As with most treatments, there are side effects associated with interferon treatment. Patients may experience flu-like symptoms such as fever, fatigue, chills, loss of appetite, nausea and vomiting, or headache. Interferon can also cause depression or worsening of existing depression, so patients who have serious depression may not be offered this medication. Suicidal thoughts and suicide has also been associated with interferon. Patients on interferon are also monitored closely with laboratory studies. This includes liver blood tests, which can become elevated. Interferon can lower certain white blood cells, can elevate a blood test called triglyceride, and can be associated with anemia. For these reasons, patients undergoing treatment with interferon must be closely monitored, and the dose of interferon may need to be adjusted to avoid toxic side effects. Although high-dose interferon is currently the only treatment approved for, by the FDA for patients with high-risk melanoma, scientists and physicians are studying other types of adjuvant therapy. This includes clinical trials with melanoma vaccines and other types of immunotherapy. If you think you may be interested in participating in a clinical trial, talk to your doctor to see if there are clinical trials for which you may be eligible. For more detailed information about melanoma, visit penmedicine.org slash Abramson, and in the search field, type in Focus on Melanoma Conference. You will find helpful videos and podcasts from Penn's annual Melanoma Conference. After you've had surgery to remove melanoma, the most important thing to remember is that there are many things you, your doctor, and your loved ones can do to detect and guard against recurrence. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask your doctor and your healthcare team. They want to help.